Well, hello YouTube. Welcome to the Jetty Wolf Kitchen. Yeah, I'm doing it in here because I got just a habit of doing it in the double sinks here. What I'm going to show you is good bait ain't cheap and cheap bait ain't no good. I want to go fishing because it takes my stress away. I want to go fishing cast my blues away I want to go fishing I don't want to watch the clock I want to go fishing I don't ever want to stop Now what I got here is I got shrimp This is what we use for bait We don't use no squid or we don't use no uh crickets or worms or rubber worms or anything like that. I don't. This is a big shrimp. This is sort of a jumbo shrimp. And what I do is I kind of, before charter, especially this time of year, I kind of like to pre-package my shrimp. A lot of people know that have fished with me over the years and have been following my YouTube channel, know that I love me some dead shrimp. It catches everything, all right? Yesterday, we're at the Mayport Jetties and we're anchored up, started out with some live shrimp because I always bring some live this time of year, this time of year being October, late October right now, going into November very shortly. And we actually were using some live shrimp on my knocker rig. What my knocker rig is, is a little half ounce egg sinker sliding up and down my mono leader. My mono leader is tied to my braid. I run about six to eight foot of mono leader, sacrificial mono. I want it to break, but I want it to be strong enough to hold a fish, of course. So I use 30 or 40, sometimes 20 if we're really in a snaggy situation. Because when we do get snagged, I just want to pop it loose, tie on another one. I have stopped using jig heads pretty much. And for the sheer, sheer reason is jig heads are very expensive. I even used to make my own and it was a very time consuming uh, project. I have hundreds, if not thousands of all different size must add 3407 hooks. I use everything from a little number four all the way up to 10 knots for black tip shark fishing in the summertime. Well, right about now, I'm using anywhere from a one knot to a three knot hook. 3407 Mustad. I've got thousands of them. So, why buy jig heads? Because you're just gonna burn them. If you're not burning jig heads, getting stuck in the bottom, you're really not fishing properly or the proper area. So what I do is I buy 3 8 and half ounce small egg sinkers. Since I'm taking my sacrificial leader, which is, like I said, a from 20 to 40 pound mono tied to my braid with a double uni, I think. I'm not big into not names. I just know what I use but it's tied together. Then I run six, eight foot of the mono leader, sacrificial mono leader. What I do is I slide on an egg, three eighths or half ounce, and then I just tie on a mustad hook. It's the same as a jig head, and it's so much cheaper. So it's to each his own, but it's, that's what I like to do. So we we're sitting at the Mayport Jetties yesterday. And it's getting to be that time of year 
where you really don't need anything too fancy. I mean, I kind of go by the old uh, saying as an old uh, charter guy in this area used to call himself uh, low-tech fishing at its finest. Because it still caught fish. Old school catches fish. Low-tech fishing still catches fish. You don't have to get all fancy. I laugh and laugh when I see people using jig heads with paint and those black nickel expensive hooks and eyeballs on them just to throw a shrimp on it. You know, those jig heads cost so much and you're just burning them. You should be. So, we were sitting at the Mayport Jetties yesterday, and I was anchored in the rocks, came back off the rocks a little bit, and we were just pitching live shrimp hooked up on my little half-ounce knocker rig. And how I hook them on, and I, I have separate videos about this, but I'll just kind of briefly tell you. If this was the shrimp's head and the tail's here, I take the hook, and my customers yesterday, very experienced fisherman, one that's, you know, fished here before. I mean, he's from this area. Still, he never even heard of this or seen it before. So you take your hook on a just a knocker rig or a jig head, and I go from its tail, I go up a couple digits. And I go straight through from the top to the bottom. And then I turn the jig head around and I go into the little walking legs on the shrimp. He'll be in the shape of a C with the hook going through the tail twice. The fish only are interested in this meat. They go through the head just because it's there. They're interested in the meat. So, I'm going to even show you what I'm going to do with these giant shrimp. And we were taking live shrimp, and then we kind of used up our live shrimp. And we were using headed, which is what I'm going to show you here, headed, just dead shrimp. And we were catching one big redfish after another, okay? And it was balls to the wall for, for quite a while. For several hours and we picked up some speckled sea trout, jacks, I caught a, a couple whiting, I took a little whiting like that big, threw him out on the same knocker rig and of course when you use something like that you're going to pick up a black tip. We caught a redfish that got attacked and his tail got bit by a shark. So these fish are hungry this time of year, they're out spawning and they're doing extraneous, you know, activities during the evening. So <laughs> boy, I'll tell you, first thing in the morning, they're mighty hungry. But what I'm going to go with here is that motto of good bait ain't cheap and cheap bait ain't no good. So I prepare this time of year. I don't do it really any other time of year. Fall, winter, spring is I prepare my baits for easy Deployment, easy usage, everything. Less messy. Other than blue crabs, then you got to really get into the mess. But as far as shrimp, you can kind of do some preparation and prepare your baits for quick and dirty fishing. Get out there. One thing I even mentioned to these guys yesterday. I don't like lollygagging around, and I want fast, 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 fast. That's what I'm looking for egg sinker hook thing, it's really quite fast because if somebody completely breaks off, I got my box there, I throw on an egg, tie on a hook, and boom, they're out the door. Not much different than if they had to just tie on a jig head. So let me show you, let me zero in here on the double sinks in the Jetty Wolf kitchen and show you what I'm going to do. All right, well, your married guys, <clears throat> I'm sure, would never get away with this, doing this in the house. The wife would say, get that stuff outside in the man cave out there in the garage or something. But I want to show you what I'm doing in here. Low wind, no cars going by, nothing. 
So this works out better. So I've got these big shrimp, and what I'm gonna do is I always, you get a bag or something, I put it in this sink. I am going to de-head the shrimp first thing, okay? I'm gonna just pinch his head. In there is what makes <clears throat> the shrimp go rotten, okay? That right there is what's gonna foul up all this. It just happens that way. So I pinch the head and I keep the tails. All right. What I did is I found out that, you know, these plastic bags, they're fine and dandy. These are just Wally's World bags, but I happen to find these really heavy plastic Ziploc bags, right? Heavy, really heavy duty. And I'm using these in my designated bait cooler. Okay, so you can see that they're very heavy duty and they're very good Ziploc. And they're made for multiple, multiple, multiple uses. So what I do is this is like four pounds of these super jumbo shrimp. And what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll throw them in there. And I'm going to keep these, store these, and freeze these flat, like a piece of paper, flat, all right? So, but I am not getting rid of these. I am not gonna throw them away. I'm gonna save them. I'm gonna save the heads. <clears throat> Good chum. Good chum. All right, so I get my shrimp, save the heads, stick these in here. So when somebody needs a shrimp, number one, these are so big, we can cut them into pieces and get more out of them, or use the entire shrimp, okay? This is just a me thing. I'm kinda anal about this, and I save the heads and package these up in about a pound or so a piece, just by, you know, nothing, I'm not, I'm not weighing them or anything. But I'm filling this bag and I will refreeze these shrimp. And this fits right in my bait cooler. I've got a small little bait cooler that's doing, that's designated for one thing, keeping my shrimp in, in the back of the boat. It's the same thing you'd be doing if you were preparing these for dinner. And then you might be, um, you might actually be, deveining them and stuff like that but buy them heads on pinch the head off I mean that is a lot of the shrimp right there so we're not wasting that we're not wasting that whatsoever we're gonna save it and this right here frozen will be a cleaner neater longer lasting shrimp because I might not use all these and I'm going to need to maybe refreeze them one more time. All right. Even though I'm keeping them on ice all day long, but this time of year, I get quite anal about my shrimp because it catches it all for me. Look at the size of that guy right there. Many times we are going to cut these into pieces because when the fish really get going, it really doesn't matter. Our shrimp have some unbelievable tentacles. Look at the size of that beautiful jumbo right there. So, just pinch his head. That right there can be a bait also. It can also be chumming a spot with those heads. Those heads are full of smell, so we don't ever want to just get rid of these. 
So, that's all I really wanted to show you, is that quality bait makes a huge difference on my boat with, with charter customers. I try my best to have everything working quickly, get into fish. And many times people say to me, you know, sometimes I don't really care what it is. We're just out here to catch some fish. And I go, there's not one single problem about that. As I always say, everything eats a shrimp. Now there's a bag full. Paper towel. I'm going in here, I'm gonna wipe my bag. And I'm gonna ziplock this baby closed. Right, I'm gonna clean it up. I don't want it all nasty. I'm gonna ziplock my bag. I'm gonna try to pull as much air out of it as I can by leaving a little opening on the end. I'm gonna lay it down, push all the air out. See, right now I don't have to worry about the shrimp swarms ever poking through my bag. So there we go. That'll go in my cooler. Because these shrimp got one heck of a horn. You pull their face down, and there's their horn. If you can see that, right up against my thumb, it's like a giant fingernail. It comes right off. And when I get rid of those, I don't have to worry about the horns poking through this bag, even if they did, or maybe they won't because this bag is so durable. All right, so that will go laying flat in the in the freezer, and I will try to spread them all out. I want to utilize the bag, and yes, I'm an anal SOB. So, there you go, and just always remember, good bait ain't cheap, and cheap bait ain't no good. So this time of year, I just get a little kind of kooky, really try to have the epitome of quality shrimp along dead shrimp along with my live many times. We'll kind of use both during the day. It all depends on what we're doing, where we're doing it. All right, and what's biting. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next edition.